with the Armenian perspective or with the more Calvinist perspective or determinist perspective. And this is something I've been growing in in the last year. And so I'm excited to share with you guys. I'm not sure how new this is for a lot of you. So the nature of God is really what we're talking about. Clark Pinnock, someone who made open theism uh, popular in, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, said, when we discuss the nature of God, humility is essential, since our understanding of God is always in need of revision. And I think that's really important as we talk about this issue, because it, it challenges a lot of things. The bottom line for us is we have so much unity, we've all been able to come to God in Christ. And relative to that, open theism and the nature of God is a peripheral issue. It's Jesus is Lord is the center. So I'm excited to talk to the, about this as well. So, and then the Apostle Paul said, now we see in a mirror indirectly, but eventually, but then, we will know fully, just as we have been fully known. And so, again, this he's talking about love, and he's talking about this relationship we have with God, and that um, the importance in this is that we're humble as we talk about these things, because they're, they can be hot issues, but as we discuss them humbly, we can learn a lot together. So open theism. Open theism says that God is the sole sovereign one who created all things as an act of love. God is sovereign over all history. then God has invited us into the love, the Trinitarian love. That's why he created creation, so that we can have a love relationship with him. And we've been given the choice to choose that love relationship or to turn from God and rebel. God's desire is that we have a relationship of love, and that he would have a relationship of love with creation. In Jesus, we have the healing of these broken relationships. But love cannot be forced. There must be freedom in order to choose love. And that's one area in my life where I felt that a deterministic worldview, where God had, had um, planned everything out in advance, how I would act, what I would do, that didn't feel like a genuine relationship. And that was one of the the hurdles that I always have a hard time with. If God planned all of the future, then my choice isn't really a choice. My choice to love isn't really a choice to love. Secondly, open theism. Open theism says that God, in His sovereignty, limited Himself and made Himself partially dependent on the actions of his free agents in history. So, basically, what you do matters. God is sovereign over all creation. God has authority over all things. But God has limited his authority himself so that you can make choices to love or to do evil. So, when you go home, see one of the problems with the deterministic worldview in my mind is that whatever happens, whatever kind of evil happens, God gets blamed for it. And in this perspective, we recognize that God created you and I and the angels and the demons with choices. They can choose to love God and obey Him and honor Him and worship Him, or they can choose to rebel. And that was part of the risk God took when He made a good creation. And so in the open perspective, and we have some scriptural examples here we can look at later, we see that God takes a risk and He says, I'm going to give you the choice to love me, but because I'm also giving you the choice to love, you also have the choice to do evil. And so then when we talk about prayer, a very practical example, 
when we talk about prayer, a very practical example, our prayers matter because it actually influences God. And God actually changes his mind. We have, um, we have stories in Moses where Moses is asking God not to bring certain plagues. And God chooses not to bring certain plagues. The language in scripture is God changed his mind. Um, we have the story of King Hezekiah, where God sent a prophet to Hezekiah to say, you're going to die. Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, and the Lord extended his life 15 years. So these are some of the passages that we look at and see. Either God is a schizophrenic by saying something's going to happen, and then doing something different, or... We have to recognize that God is relational and He's calling us into a relationship with Him. And even though He's sovereign and the only authority we have, He's given to us, He somehow allows us to interact with Him in a genuine, loving relationship so that we can influence Him through our prayers. And He influences us, obviously, immensely. One of the fears I think a lot of people have when we talk about open theism is they say, but if, God's, if God didn't plan everything in, in the future, everything is going to go out of control. And we're not saying that God is out of control. We're saying that God has infinite wisdom and he has a plan. But rather than a blueprint with every single event that every single person and, and tree and bird Instead of everything being planned specifically, God has formed what we call general determinism. Here I have it. Um, it's more of... That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I lost the word. That's good. What's that? Yeah, um, I'm looking for a word, but it's escaping me. The picture is this. Here's the analogy. Um, Professor Bautista obviously is infinitely wiser than I am. <laughs> and he is infinitely more intelligent than I am. In a game of chess, the the best chess players in the world can plan 30 moves in advance. An average chess player can maybe plan six. So imagine Professor Bautista is God, and he's playing against me in a game of chess. And because he's God, he's not even just limited to 30 moves ahead. He can see infinitely in advance every way that he could possibly beat me in the entire game. He's planned in every single move in advance. Because God is infinitely sovereign, He knows everything. So what happens is, I make a move in chess, and Professor Bautista makes a move, and as the game goes on, and as I'm losing players, and as he's beating me, the options he has for how he's going to beat me are getting smaller and smaller. But we have no doubt in our mind that he'll beat me. And that's the perspective that open theists are saying. That Instead of God predetermining every single action, we have choices here on earth to make. But God works along with us and he makes, he makes sovereign decisions. Some things are still predetermined by God. We see that in scripture. But other things God says, no, I'm leaving these choices up to you and I'll work with you to bring my will about. Whether you choose to do the loving thing or the evil thing, God will still work in history to make things happen, to bring about his final will, which is the redemption of all things, the new creation, the kingdom of God on earth, heaven and earth become one. It's just not a blueprint. So he has flexible strategies. He changes his plans based on the actions of free agents, both human and angelic. Uh, the, sec the second Samuel example is um, King Saul and King David. God says in this, in this verse, he says, um, 
something like, it grieves me that Saul has done this, and I wish I hadn't made that decision. And then the second verse again, he says, I regret having made that decision. And so we have to really wrestle with this language. Is God actually, if God knows everything in the future, how can he regret something that he already planned to do? So these are some of the questions. Finally, okay. The only omniscient God knows all that we can, all that can be possibly known. But these events are either known partly, sorry, and these events are known as partly definite, so closed, or partly indefinite, open. So in history, there's three kinds of events, basically. There's events God planned in, in the future, determined events, like uh, King Cyrus, God said what his name would be before he was born, and then God said that he would help rebuild Jerusalem. We know those things were planned in advance, that's what scripture says. Then we also have that God has knowledge of every possibility, like in the chess match. God knows every move I could make in that chess game, but he's left it open to me to decide which move I would make. And then finally, events that are determined to occur by the effects. So, um, if my car is just almost out of gas and I'm driving home, I'm going to run out of gas if I can't get to a gas station before I run out of gas. I don't believe God planned that, and that's not necessarily an evil or a loving choice by me. It's caused by the circumstances. I won't fly home in a helicopter tonight. That's not God's will, and that's not because I've made a bad choice. That's the reality of the situation, unless one of you has a helicopter. So, we are not captive to ultimate chance. God has acted and continues to act in history to achieve his unchanging purposes that is, making all things new. Now, as clear what it always is good to remind me, all this doesn't matter unless it actually affects how we live. Doctrine and theology, the point of it is that we apply it to our lives, not that we can sit in the academy and talk about it. So, I believe the, the implications of open theology is very important. First off, God is not responsible for all of the evil in the world. Evil in the world exists because of the choice of free agents, whether that's angelic beings and demons who rebel against God, or whether that's you and I choosing to rebel against God. I think that's very important. So then when we have something like Andoy, when we have an abusive spouse, when we have a child who dies of cancer, we don't have to automatically say it's God punishing these people or come up with some kind of idea or say that you know a child died of cancer when he was two years old because the parents were sinners or that child must have been a sinner like Augustine had talked about. Secondly, intimate relationship with God Partitionary prayer really matters because God is genuinely responsive to us. When we pray, it actually counts. If God has already planned the future, then our prayers count for our relationship with God. But if God has given us responsibility to be agents on this earth and to choose love and to be transformational, then our prayers really transform this earth. And this gives us as pastors as community leaders, as family leaders, an open perspective to go. When we sit down and talk with God and listen, it transforms things. It's really important. Again, connected to that, missional living really matters because God has given us a responsibility 
to be missional people. The reality is, everyone in this room lives like an open theist. Whether you believe it or not, if you got up this morning and decided what color shirt you're going to put on, decided how fast you were going to drive, or if you were going to take the MRT or a jeepney, you're living assuming that this, the decisions you make count for something. And so open theism opens this perspective going that actually those choices are mine to make and I can be held responsible for them. Finally, in this we see that, especially in light of the evil in the world, God does look 100% like Jesus. He's a, a loving God who wants to be with his people in an intimate relationship, just like Jesus came here. And he gives us responsibility just the same way he gave Peter responsibility and said, Peter, you're going to be the rock the church is built on. But you have to choose it. So... That's all. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the conversation. So the outline, first, uh, talk about the definition of three very important uh, terms. First is theology, second is implementing of theism, and then uh, presenting the open view of theology, and then uh, the critic on this uh, particular view. So let's start with the definition. By the word theology, we may simply must attempt to explain God's thinking and actions vis-a-vis the presence of suffering in the world. And the word came about by the vision of two Greek words from Gottfried uh, Leibniz, Theos, God, and Dike, justice or justice of God, taken from Paul's letter to Romans. And it became the standard term for the study of God's justice with respect to the attendant existential organs in the world. And usually this problem is being discussed mostly by Christians, but as Max Weber said, um, theology is found in all uh, religions, all forms of religion, so this should not be contained only in Christian discussions. That's why, technically, this is defined in the broader uh, terms. Uh, one given from the book theology in the world of the Bible, the attempt to define divine justice in the face of a very phenomena that appear to indicate the latest indifference or hostility towards uh, toward religious people. Right. Now let's define evil. Evil includes the words or categories as bad, unjust, immoral, painful, hard done to the well-being of the saints and creature. We also call them in this category, as well as unjust treatment or privation of good. Loss of opportunity due to or resulting from premature death and anything that prevents one from living a virtuous and fulfilling life can also be considered evil. Evil also extends a person is committed to doing what is morally um, wrong. So basically, what I will be covering in this presentation is just the theoretical evil. There are evidential evil, experiential evil, mostly covered in other disciplines. So we have uh, the moral evil, the misuse or the abuse of uh, the free will results to moral evil. Natural evil, natural disasters, the point of um, tsunami, and then the horrendous evil. Uh, moral evil don't include huge proportions. Like for example, the uh, regime of Pol Pot, the Holocaust, and uh, things like that. Okay. Now, um, the obviously is really a problem among Christians because we believe in God. There is no God and there is no problem about the sufferings in the world. So it should be discussed first of all by, by the Christians. So Rome that said that he frames it this way. If God is good, it is reasonable to believe that he wants to deliver the creatures he loves from suffering and evil because it's good. If God is all knowing, it is reasonable to believe that He knows how to deliver His creatures from evil and suffering. And if He is powerful, it is reasonable to believe that He is able to deliver us from evil and suffering. But evil and suffering are persistently and growingly present. Thus, either God is less good, less knowing, or less powerful, or the more radical view, God does not exist. Rome 3. 
encapsulates the problem of theodicy on the simple terms. The belief in God's goodness and at the same time the belief in His power and, in the, and the belief in the real occurrence of suffering. All of them in one document of particular situation. The open theism, as discussed by our friend, is a theological construct that deals with the free will of man and the nature of the future. Okay? Of course, it affects all of uh, the, the constant nature of God, but basically, uh, first of all, it, per it pertains to God and its relationship with the free will of man in the future. It advances the idea that God has granted humanity free will, and in order for this free will to be free, to be truly free, the future choice of individuals must not be fully known to God. Fully known. Some of things he knows, some things are not known to him. Open things stress the, initi the initiative of God to make a reciprocal relationship with mankind on the basis of love. Okay, I think the first presenter uh, made emphasis on this. Yes. <clears throat> so love is a definitive divine attribute and involves not just care and commitment, but also divine responsiveness. God interacts and influences the world, and the world interacts and influences God. Because of this, He does not exercise meticulous control over the good choices of man and leaves it open so that man may make significant responsible decisions for himself out of personal will. If God preordained everything that is going to happen, then we are not responsible for God is because it is God who made all of them for us. This free-flowing response mechanism, mechanism makes the relationship vitally authentic. I like the word uh, authentic because if, there is, if God knows everything that must happen, then the relationship will not be really that authentic, right? In open theism, God's knowledge is dynamic. He knows and learns as events take place in history. Some of you would react. Is God still learning? Under the process theology, um, uh, Alfred Lord White had said that God is still in the process of learning things. Okay? But of course, in classical theology, you know, we, we, we don't say that because God truly knows everything that would. And in fact, according to Berkhoff, uh, God cannot be surprised by any form of information. He knows everything to the minor detail. But in open theism, God still learns because he does not know anything that's going to happen. He is receptive and flexible in the way he relates with the world. He knows some about the future and does not know others by reason of voluntary restriction. In other words, he restricted himself for the purpose of, of, this, of this dynamic loving relationship. He limits his knowledge of free will choices so that man can remain free, yet he can know the future in some way so that the prophets were able to prophesy about things to come. Even Jesus Christ himself, for example, Jesus Christ, of course, knew the prophecy that somebody is going to betray him. But aside from that, he also knew the very person who would betray him. He also knew the very time, the very place where he would be betrayed. Okay, to some extent, he, he knows the picture, but in, in another, in another uh, side type of the call, he didn't know some of the things that would, would happen in the future. Okay. <clears throat> so the open view theology is this. Open view theism vindicates and relieves God of the responsibility for evil and suffering. Sin is the source of all moral evils. Moral evils are within the perimeter of man's Volition. It is the misuse or abuse of free will. Okay? If something bad happens to, to somebody, it is because in the very start, man fell. Okay? That's how it's uh, usually explained. And similarly, God did not uh, preordain eventful disasters that take away precious lives. So we cannot blame God for, for the disasters that are taking place in, in, in the world. Third, and perhaps more scary for many than the Lord repulsive, is the belief that under open theism, there is no individual purpose for all the take place. Okay. Some may find that very abhorrent because we believe that we, also, we always see God is good, that means He has a purpose for everything. 
Yes, God has an overarching purpose for everything, but not to every detail that happens. For example, if you break faith, you came in late today, don't blame God. Don't say that, well, God, the uh, purpose from the very beginning of the world that I would be late today. God has no purpose for, it, for every detail that happens in, to man. Okay? But, um, the, the, there are overarching purpose. For example, we were predestined to be, become like Christ. Okay? But not in every detail situation that takes place in our lives. Right? In open theism, God is a risk taker. He took the risk of creating free moral agents with the risk that this may turn their backs on Him. Similarly, the world was created with the same risk taking. Let me give an example. Um, according to some experts, we are the only planet in the whole universe that has plate tectonics that is important for the separation of water and land. But at the same time, this caused earthquakes, so God takes risk. Okay? Hurricanes are important for the distribution of those of three. But at the same time, hurricanes kill people, so God takes risk. In the nature also, of course, in um, creating the libertarian freedom for moral agents like us. Okay? The obvious view assess. Uh, uh, I'm talking about this text here. First, is that open view theology has a, a great contribution to biblical theology. Okay? The problem with the systematic theology is try to systematize everything, and you cannot, because you will be avoiding some of the details of the, 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 the nuances of the passages, particularly of the Old Testament. I, I, I think, uh, in terms of biblical theology, open theism is more faithful to the text. When it says that God relents, God really relents. When it says that God regret, or God re re regrets that He made man, that was an actual authentic feeling. It's not just an anthropomorphism, anthropopathism uh, expressions. Okay? Or else everything would be a sarasmela, everything would be just a huge uh, cosmic drama where God is just playing the script because He already been determined everything. But when God enters into a relationship, He doesn't fake it. When He feels sad, when He's frustrated, when, he, when He's hurting, it's true that it's happening inside of Him. Okay? And open these and treats the problem of evil and suffering very seriously. Very seriously, because God is a personal God. Uh, could you imagine your pastor? Uh, some of us are pastors here. Okay. Um, uh, for example, Pastor Haji <laughs> left the pulpit one Sunday and, <laughs> and he, will, he will tell the congregation, let's, let's praise God, brothers and sisters, because uh, Sister, uh, Sister, Sister Cecil Madonna, her, her daughter got raped last night. Praise God! Hallelujah! That's a third beat by God. Did you praise God for that? Did you celebrate? Or let's let's praise the Lord uh, because uh, the husband of uh, Sister Marine uh, got jailed last night. Let's sing, uh, I'm free. Is <laughs> 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 it, it God determined everything that would happen? You're not really taking those who are suffering very seriously. Okay? So I think I open things and response to the problem authentically than, than, than uh, the other views. Okay? Um, open things is a better alternative to hard and hyper determining sense. Okay? Um, even Calvin himself, that, uh, even Calvin himself said, even the, the coming to the entry entrance of sin is part of the blood of God. I felt to quote one, uh, I don't know if it's. Uh, but anyway, the fourth is one important feature of open, open beauty of this is triumphant eschatology. Um, triumphant eschatology is not a helicopter type of eschatology where, where we're just waiting for, for the helicopter to come and we will all be raptured and be brought to glory. Um, especially Boyd, he, he said that uh, there is an end type battle that will uh, take place and God will assert his power in the end. So there will, be, there will be a vindication of God, and at the same time, um, the rest of all the people in the midst of this uh, grand battle of God. Okay. 
Now, it's witness. <coughs> the most repeated objection to the, to the open view theodicy is that it makes a scary universe <coughs> in a limited time. Um, of course, we are finite beings and uh, we hate the unknown. And if God doesn't know what would happen in the future, what is left of us? Okay? In the scary universe. All right? The second problem, objection on open theism, is its teaching on real people's evil. In other words, um, there are some sufferings that has no purpose. They just happen. It is evil. Okay? So these are the two uh, objections on the open view um, theodicy. I remember, it's, I think it's Adam Clark who said that uh, regarding the, um, the, the hyperterminism, he said that when somebody says, it's God who made it for him. That's hard, these hyper Calvinists are. I'm not against Calvinism, some may be Calvinist. But the, the open view, I think, is the better alternative, especially when it comes to the issue of theodicy. That's all. <laughs> Dependent sa mga tao. 
Medyo biotic screen yung dalawa. Sa classical theology, sa Congress theology, ang Diyos ay talaga affected, distant, powerful. Alam ang lahat ng bagay, determine ang lahat. But we have process theology that God is theologically weak, dependent, in a way, nagpa-process ang learning. Ang acceptable yun sa maraming mga evangelicals. So, gumawa sila. Open the ESM, okay? They're trying to walk in the middle, the middle way. So, kaya may pwede conclusion ng open theism. So, kung ano talaga ang kanilang gusto mong improve as another view of God, no? So, sa kanila, kaya yung sinabi kanila ni Dark, ni Dark and Dark na. God is powerful. So, when they speak against, of course, the process theologian, so, sa iba mong problem ng open theism na, God is powerful. God is, God knows everything. Pero pagdating na sa classical theology, may problema, may problema sila kasi ba ano sila sa classic theology? So ina-adjust nila ang konti. Ang ina-adjust nila is God, by himself, based on volition, based on decision, tinalakit niya yung kanya sarili. Kinastrate niya yung kanya sarili. Hindi pwedeng gawin ng external power yun. Otherwise, sasabihin, napababa talaga yung Diyos. Kaya siya mismo buwas na yung sarili nun. Kinastrate niya. Hindi ko alam kung nag-iisip tayo, pero parang, parang ikaw mismo, Because sinabi nga kanila na yung love ang number one essence ng Diyos at walang dynamic o walang true relationship between two people in love with each other kung walang dynamic relationship kung between sovereign and Lord and subject so kailangan magkaibigan na kapag tayo So para maging authentic yung ganong relationship ginawa ng Diyos, ginawa sa niya yung power niya para para maging dynamic na separate yung relationship ng dalawa So sabi niya, sige Dataan natin sa operasyon to. Surgery. Bibigyan kita ng pre-win. Libertarian pre-win. You can decide whether good or bad. It is in your decision. Wala sa akin yun. So, para naman talaga totoo, authentic yun, kakastrate ko ang sarili ko. Pabuasak yung power ko. Hindi ko malalaman kung ano gagawin mo next move mo. Like in the chest. I can forecast. I can at least guess yung next move. Pero hindi ko talaga pwede i-determine yun. So, para maging equal tayo yung dalawa. So, naging authentic yung free will mo at kinastroy ko naman yun para magkaroon tayo ng mutual relationship. So, tanto ang ano ng OPT-SM, yung love, dynamic relationship, at saka yung free will ng tao. Anong problema doon? Si Sanders ba yun? Gante at risk mo, kung saan na siya tayo mo. So, ang isa na doon, nag-take ng risk ng Diyos para bigyan tayo ng ng free will. Makapulisay tayo ngayon, oh! Para in a way of process. Kasi against, ang notion talaga is, gusto nang banggain yung fixed being, no? yung fixed notion ng God. Sa sa ano ni Divinas, ito yung tension na malaki, yung yung nabagaan din yung totality and infinity. Kasi yung totality, meron tayo laging mga doon pang paniniwala na fix yan, nandiyan na yan, and everything should go under those order, those system. Wala na pwedeng lumabas doon. Ang tawag ng totalization, wala na tayo lahat. Sabi ni Rivinas, maraming mga meaning ang bagay na would escape yung ganong klase ng totalizing uh, process. Tatag yung infinity. So hindi pwedeng i-conceptualize lagi siya ilagay sa loob. So, yung mga ganun, ano, discord, yun yun lang, sinilin namin na patuloy lang tayo ng mag, ano, mag, mag, alam na panibagong para ng pagkilala sa, sa ating Diyos. So, yun ang ano ng open teaser. But, ang problema na lang, sabi nila, because of giving free will at castrating myself, kung gusto namin question pa yun, no, paano niya kinastrate, Naglagay pa siya ng time, time machine for certain spirit of peace, mawawala yung castration. Kasi at the worst, hindi siya aware. Aware pa siya, nakastrated siya. O meron siya naglagay siya ng oras na in year 3,000, mawawala yung castration ko, babalik ako sa normal ko, may hindi siya sabi ako. Unless hindi na ito yung castration, kung aware siya na nakastrated siya. No? So, wala may mga problema yun. In, ang problema nila ngayon, sabi nila is, 
Don't completely is a Christ now. Even yung history natin. Walang tayo sa history. Hindi tayo sigurado na we will end yung kasaysayan natin sa maganda. Because complete everything is a Christ. At yun ang problema ng process theology. Because process theology, God is ontologically weak. Dependent. Hindi siya ano. So, pag sinabi mo, kinastrain ng Diyos ang power niya, the same is process theology in Ovid Kisel. Ibig sabihin, wala tayong sigurado na mag-i-end tayo sa isang magandang kinabukasan. Hindi na ang sabihin na, hmm, una no. Parang process theology, hindi. God can unitarily and by His own will, arbitrarily, kung gusto niya, pwede siya pumasok at mag-intervene sa history. Ngek. Sabi niya, bawal sa freedom na parin. Kaya niya, ayaw pa kaya naman yun, kinastrate niya sarili niya, kasi bawal pa kaya naman yung free will. Pero, kung gusto niya kung kailan niya, papasok siya to restore history. Ang gulo niya. Kasi alam pala niya. Kasi problem na nila, papunta sa, lalo sa pinipil ni Boyd yata yun, rebellious ang tao. Then, bigyan mo siya ng sandata ng free will, rebellious niya, saan pumunta ka sa isaya? Kaya biglang nagulo si Pinak, ano? Ano? Ah, hindi. Kung gugustuhin ng Diyos, makapagpasok sa akin. Gusto na siya. O yung inilangit na rin, pwede siya kung mag-intervene para bagoy. Kaya ang tanong, kailan yun? Kailan siya papasok? At ano yung time machine? Tapos sasabihin, papasok siya para magkaroon ng ano yung kasaysayan, no? Yan ang ano. Yung truncation ng Diyos, yung pagka-strike ng kanyang sarili, hindi pwedeng gawin sa kanya yun. Kasi gusto yung maintain ng open thesis na ang Diyos sovereign pa rin. Ang Diyos makapangyarihan pa rin. Pero ang problema, out of contingency, out of necessity, the reason why he truncated this, the reason why he castrated this, because of love, I want to have a dynamic relationship with you, therefore, kinastrate ko ang sarili ko. It was not all my own decision as God, but rather because of love. So in that way, hindi talaga na-maintain yung power ng Diyos, kundi out of external of himself, pero isang This is our incident na nagtulak sa akin para i-castrate ko yung ating sarili. So, hindi rin niya talaga na-maintain yung kanyang sinasabi na ang Diyos independent, ontologically independent. Kundi may pag-ibig na namagitan. Ano ba kailan mga problem sa notion ng OPT? Libertarian free will. Yung hindi lang basta free will, libertarian, no? Hindi ko alam kung yung libertarian, connected sa liberty nung lakas namin yung araw. <laughs> kung kasi pagdapa lang yung liberty nung. Yung e, libertarian, ibig sabihin, authentic inquisition mo. From your own volition, your own will, you decide out of your own mind, no? Walang epekto sa ano. Pero ang tensya na sabi nila, requirement then to follow God, to obey God. Otherwise, there will be may hunting reward and punishment eh, sila pinak eh. Pag disobey ka sa Diyos, paparusahan ka, pag nag-obey ka, hindi libertan ng freedom yun. Kasi mayroon din threat eh, na pag di mo sinunod ng Diyos, paparusahan ka. Kaya sabi na at first, na libertan ng freedom, you can disobey God, you can obey God, it's up to you. Pero manda ka, hindi ano pa. Hindi libertan ng freedom yun. Kasi may takot ano pa rin eh. Maganda sana ko. Sige, kung yung gusto mo, what then? Sama din tayo. So, hindi talaga libertary ang freedom. Sabi nga sa viewer, ano yung pinay mo lang? Yung viewer? Viewer? There's no freedom. There's no freedom. Only appearance. Adjustment viewer. Only that appearance of freedom. Wala talaga freedom. So, appearance na kung freedom meron tayo. Okay, ano pang ilang isyo sa... Medyo confused ang open TSM because dumadaan na sila sa middle path or middle, middle way. Kung kapag ang kausap nila ay mga Calvinists, sinasabi nila, open ang God. Pero kapag process theology ang kausap nila, process theology, sinasabi nila na powerful ang Diyos. Hindi talaga nila maano. Because they try to walk in between ng dalawang theological na, no? Uh, schools, no? Yan ang ginagawa ng open PS. Okay. Ano pang, siguro sa tanuman na later, ano pang pwedeng 
Pilat girl. Ito yung masyadong may binwala sa unak na tumatanggal. Hindi na maalala yung mga... Okay, yun lang siguro. May ilang sa...